You've probably never thought about beryllium. It's not the rock star of the periodic table like gold or mercury. It doesn't sparkle on jewelry or get blasted in science fiction explosions. But this element, beryllium, quietly powers satellites, tells us secrets about stars, and even helped physicists discover one of the fundamental pieces of atomic structure. We're unpacking what is beryllium, what it is, how it was found, and why it matters far beyond its size, right here on History of Simple Things. At the simplest level, beryllium is a chemical element, one of the basic building blocks of matter. It sits in group two of the periodic table among the alkaline earth metals with the symbol B and atomic number four. That means it has four protons in its nucleus and four electrons buzzing around. But here's the interesting thing. It's not something you'll ever find lying around as pure metal in nature. Beryllium almost always hides inside minerals, compounds of rock, especially a gemstone you do know, beryl. That includes emeralds and aquamarines, just without the color and sparkle. It's a light steel gray metal with properties that sound almost contradictory. Low density but high strength, good thermal conductivity yet brittle under stress. It resists oxidation in air, that outer layer protects it, and it conducts heat better than most metals in its class. So basic definition done. Here's the fun part, how we even realized this element existed. Let's rewind to the late 18th century. Scientists were obsessed with uncovering new elements, and Europe was the center of chemical exploration. French chemist Nicolas Louis Vauquelin was poking around gemstones like beryl and emerald in 1798. These rocks had been admired for centuries. Egyptians and Romans prized them, but no one knew they contained something truly new. Vauquelin isolated the oxide, not the metal, of a new element in those stones. That means he found a compound containing an unknown element, but not the pure element itself. For decades, chemists debated what this new substance was. One early name was glucinium, from the Greek glycus, meaning sweet, because the salts tasted sweet. As Live Science dryly notes, it tasted sweet, but don't try that yourself, beryllium is toxic. Then in 1828, two chemists, Friedrich Wohler in Germany and Antoine A. Boussy in France, independently did what Vauquelin couldn't. They isolated the metal itself by reducing beryllium chloride with potassium. That was the true birth of beryllium as something we could study and use. But the name situation stayed messy. Some called it glucinium, others beryllium based on beryl, the mineral it came from. Eventually, in the mid-20th century, international chemists agreed on beryllium as the official name, cementing it on the periodic table the way we know it today. Why bother with beryllium at all? It's rare, it's toxic, it doesn't dazzle like gold, and yet it has a reputation among engineers and scientists as a critical element. First, strength to weight ratio. For such a light metal, its stiffness, measured by something called the modulus of elasticity, is higher than steel's. That's wild for something so light. Second, it's highly transparent to X-rays, and almost nothing stops those rays. That makes it perfect for X-ray windows, literally the transparent barrier in X-ray tubes that lets the rays out without absorbing them. Third, when beryllium gets hit by alpha particles, helium nuclei speeding through, it liberates neutrons. This bizarre property made it invaluable in early nuclear experiments and in neutron sources for research. And because it's so lightweight and stable under heat, engineers have used it in aerospace stuff, satellites, missiles, and even in structural parts of spacecraft where every gram counts. 
Here's where the story gets downright cinematic. In 1932, British physicist James Chadwick was trying to understand a mysterious particle that had no electric charge, something that didn't fit neatly into existing atomic theory. He bombarded beryllium with alpha particles and watched what came out, neutral particles that behaved like a new type of subatomic particle. That experiment was the discovery of the neutron. This was huge. Without it, we wouldn't have the modern understanding of nuclear reactions or nuclear power. So a metal that once sat in gemstones helped unlock the core of atomic science. Remember how we said beryllium doesn't occur free in nature? Most of it is locked inside minerals, especially beryl, that same family that gives us emeralds and aquamarines, and bertrandite. Mining isn't the glamorous part. Beryl and bertrandite often contain only a tiny fraction of the metal, so extracting beryllium is complicated, involving chemical treatments and careful separation. Commercial production really only took off in the mid-20th century, around the 1950s, when industrial processes finally made beryllium affordable and available at scale. Most beryllium today comes from a few countries, and it's used more as alloys and compounds than as pure metal. Beryllium copper, a blend of copper and a small amount of beryllium, is stronger and non-sparking, which matters in aerospace, electrical contacts, and precision tools. Here's the uncomfortable truth. Beryllium kills if mishandled. Airborne beryllium dust can cause chronic beryllium disease, a lung condition that can be crippling, it's a carcinogen. That's why industries that use it have strict safety standards and why you'll never see it in consumer products in raw form. So while early chemists once tasted beryllium compounds to note sweetness, that's insanity by modern standards. This is a material that demands respect. Modern standards around handling and exposure are rigorous and necessary. Beryllium is one of those elements that doesn't look like much until you realize how deeply it's woven into science and technology. It's in mirrors on space telescopes, in gyroscopes that help airplanes stay stable, in nuclear research that change physics, and in alloys that make equipment stronger and safer. It doesn't glitter like gold. It doesn't get its own holiday. But every high-tech corner of modern life has felt its influence. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.